sad penguins, space treason, and the unfortunate fate of sentient trees. If you like pink puffy balls and remakes that don't suck, then this episode of West Does Games is for you. It's Kirby Superstar Ultra from the Nintendo DS. Pink puffy balls. I should probably rewrite that. Timer starts now. Kirby Superstar is a varied collection of five games and a handful of mini-games. Kirby Daddy Mashahiro Sakurai said that his goal with this game was to create an omnibus collection of quick-to-beat individual scenarios, each complete with their own unique gameplay. The DS remake was released in 2008 to celebrate the 15th anniversary of the Kirby series. Ultra is a revamped version of Superstar with updated graphics and brand new gameplay modes, with most of these modes unlocked once you beat the original games. The graphics have been completely redone. I thought the original look of Superstar was great, but this remake somehow manages to keep the same feel while being slightly more polished. I'm just glad that they didn't do that ugly half 3D thing that they did with other DS remakes. Go back home, ugly DS Marth. You're drunk. These super compressed animated cutscenes are new. What is this, an AVI? Let's quickly go over all the games. Spring Breeze is a remake of the very first game, Kirby's Dream Land, and naturally it best summarizes all the Pink Puff's best elements, such as doing a little dance at the end of each stage, puffing yourself endlessly into the air like a cute little balloon, and f***ing the environment worse than the Republican Party. Spring Breeze is easy fun. In fact, the whole game is really easy, except for some parts of the game that are weirdly hard. Gourmet Race, where you race in three stages against King DDD is unforgiving and you kind of have to do it perfect or you'll lose. Dynablade is really similar to Spring Breeze, but with the added joy of getting to orphan these baby birds for no reason. Oh, never mind, I guess she's fine. Why did we even fight to begin with? It's not really clear. Those looking for story or depth to these games will probably be in for a disappointment. The original Mario Brothers had their simple Save the Princess plots, and that's fine at least because it was a clear objective. If I want to figure out why I'm fighting Dynablade or figure out why Meta Knight wants revenge, I'll need to browse through the manual. And these added cutscenes for the DS do a surprisingly good job of not providing anything of substance or clarity in any way, shape, or form. The Great Cave Offensive is a Metroidvania-style dungeon crawler that, like the Gourmet Race, is a huge difficulty spike from the first two games. This cave is huge, and there's a whopping 60 treasure chests to find, with a lot of them only attainable with the use of certain powers. Special powers, by the way, is one of the best features of a Kirby game. By sucking up an enemy, Kirby gets a cute little hat and a new power. These powers are rich with Easter eggs, such as the Sword ability, giving Kirby a Link from Legend of Zelda hat, or the Yo-Yo ability, which gives you a backwards hat and the power to breakdance. The Stone move lets you turn into a variety of heavy objects like the statue of Adonis or this bust of the hamster from Kirby 3. You can also sacrifice your powers to create an ally who will faithfully follow you around and help you fight enemies. If your ally's health is low, Kirby will give them a little kissy to make them feel better. The final boss of the Great Cave Offensive is a baddie named Wham Bam Rock, who is clearly an archetype for Master Hand from Smash Brothers. Sakurai would later go on to make the famous fighting series, so it's cool seeing these little bits of ideas he'd rework later on. Revenge of Meta Knight is an interesting one. Kirby takes on the halberd, Meta Knight's flying dreadnought, and decides to F it up for seemingly no reason. Yes, Meta Knight is a bad guy, but the only indication of what his intention even is, is one line saying that he's gonna stop Dreamland from being so lazy. That makes him the villain? That'd be like destroying your personal trainer's car because f*** him for making me do push-ups. In Milky Way Wishes, the Sun and Moon are fighting, and Kirby goes on an intergalactic journey to make a wish to stop the Solar Lunar feuding. Kirby loses his ability to absorb powers. You can only take on a new power by finding power trophies scattered around the Kirbyverse. In a fun twist, once you've collected a power, you could freely choose it whenever from the menu. This makes Milky Way Wishes a nice culmination of all the gameplay before it, allowing you to finally have free range with the powers you practice using up until now. Once you beat all the stages, it's revealed that Marks, a villain with literally no backstory or exposition that just appears out of nowhere, was the one behind the sun and moon fighting. He steals your wish and proceeds to laugh maniacally at the prospect of bringing chaos to the galaxy. Who even is this guy? You're taken into a Galaga-style shooter minigame, which is a pretty fun detour. It just feels a little out of place. You then fight Marks and his adorably derpy face. This is a fairly tough fight, especially for a Kirby game. Pro tip, the hammer is overpowered and an easy way to beat him. After the battle, Kirby goes home and sleeps, and perhaps the most anticlimactic ending imaginable. The arena has you going up against all the bosses in the game. Between each match, you'll get a chance to pick whatever power you want. I always love the versatility of the yo-yo, sword, or fighter the most. The bosses are randomized, which makes each run a different experience. You only get one life, and there's no saving, so it could be pretty tense near the end. This is about the time you may want to take advantage of the shield move, which I forgot existed. There's a ton of bosses and very little health refills, so it becomes a fun challenge where you really have to game it perfectly to avoid any damage. New to the Ultra version are Revenge of the King, Meta Nightmare, Helper to Hero, and the True Arena. Revenge of the King is basically just a hard mode of Spring Breeze. The enemies are harder and the stages are longer, and this time around, DDD has a super-powered hammer and a scary Bane mask, but like before, he's a pushover. Meta Nightmare Ultra is probably the coolest of the new features, allowing you to replay the first five games as the sword-wielding emo Kirby, Meta Knight. He pretty much plays completely different. He's faster and has special moves that can be accessed from the DS's touchscreen. The more enemies you defeat, the more
more points you'll have to access moves like heal, dash, or summon allies. Honestly, he's so overpowered it basically plays as an easy mode in an already easy game. The final unlockable is the True Arena, which is just an extra hard version of the same game but with less health refills. As you'd expect, it's the hardest mode in the game. So in summation, Kirby Superstar Ultra is a fun and colorful platformer that's perfect for busy gamers that just want to pick up and play kind of game. And its updated graphics and new modes make it even better than the original. Oh, we haven't talked about the minigames yet, have we? First, there's Samurai Kirby, a quick draw game that will test your reflexes. This actually reminds me of a funny story when I was younger involving a samurai sword, a cheating ex-girlfriend, and a red-eye flight to Brazil. It all started when- Ah, oh, we're out of time. Make sure to subscribe to West Does Games for more retro gaming goodness. Thanks for watching, see you next time.